Hey friends, and welcome to the Happy Hour with Jamie Ivey podcast. I'm your host, Jamie, and I'm so glad you're here. Each week on this show, I invite a girlfriend to join me and we chat about the big things in life, the little things in life, and everything in between. This summer, step up your grill game with the revolutionary Beyond Burger. This mouthwatering masterpiece is the only plant-based burger that is so meaty, it's sold in the meat case at your local grocery store. It's packed with protein, it's better for you and the planet, and will satisfy even the most ravenous of carnivores. Are you ready to taste the future of protein? Visit beyondmeat.com slash happy hour to find a local retailer near you. That's beyondmeat.com slash happy hour. Hey guys, you are listening to episode number 200 of the happy hour, 200 of the happy hour. I am so excited. I can hardly contain my excitement. And today's going to be a super fun show. I have invited one of my favorite people to come back on the show with me. And that is my main man, Aaron. Oh oh boy. Hey babe. Hi. Okay. So Aaron's on the show today and we're going to talk about past guests. We put together some clips that we're going to play from the past 200 episodes. We've got 12 clips. And let me tell you, I wanted to have, I think it the number was like 78 clips in the show. 200 is and, what you asked yeah, for. Yeah, 200 clips. And Lindsay, my podcast assistant was like, Jamie, we can't do 200 clips. So we have 12. Um, and <laughs> 12 of the best. 12 of the best. 12 some moments that we want to talk about, some moments that have happened on the show, some things that have impacted me and some things that we heard from you guys that you guys have enjoyed as well. So let's get started. Congratulations on 200. It's also the Thank day you. that America was born that we're celebrating this 200th Today is July 4th. It's also the birthday of America, which the happy, happy hour- Happy birthday, America. The happy hour is celebrating 200 episodes and the United States of America- 242. 242. And the reason I really know that is because we saw Hamilton recently. Ah, that's why you knew that. Seventeen. I was wondering why you knew that that number so quickly. If you haven't seen Hamilton, we highly, highly, highly recommend. So it's so good. Side note there. So first of all, thanks for coming on, Aaron. And yep. fun fact, you are the m- guest who has been on the most of the happy hour. I didn't realize that. I think it's because we just got you have close proximity. I feel like sometimes there are days where you're like, God, I don't know who to have on my podcast today, and then you're like, Aaron, come over here, record something. <laughs> That's not how it happens, but in all seriousness, people really enjoy when they hear us together. Um, one That's of the, fun. One of the most feedback that I get is, it sounds like you guys really support each other. Well, we actually do. We actually we definitely do. do support each other a lot. In fact, to show my support, I've created a little clip reel that I think encompasses your favorite moments on the happy hour. Well, I'm very uh, honored by that and thankful that you would invite me back, the second male you've ever had on your podcast. No, you're the only male I've ever had. It's the second show. I wanted a big cake like they do on like Friends, 100th episode, uh-huh. but I didn't think people listening, would it would translate very well. What's well, okay, because I got you one. You did it. I did, and inside is a <laughs> pony. <laughs> it's always my favorite person to have my husband join me. Yay. Aaron, welcome to the happy hour. Thanks for having me on. I love being on your show. You do? Is it your favorite podcast you've ever been on? It is my, by, yes, by far, my favorite podcast that I've ever been on. And your second favorite would be? Uh, that I've ever been on? Uh-huh. Um, the other episode of the happy hour with <laughs> JamieIV.com that I was on. I take this seriously. It's not every day you get to be the host of the happy hour with Jamie Ivy. Well, no one's ever been the host of the happy hour with Jamie Ivy except for Jamie Ivy. And now today, it's me. Hey, I'm ready. No, it's when we had our date night in the house the other night. And you were making down. dinner and he just sits joined down. us. We got jazz music on, <laughs> boot out, and he just sits down. Hey, guys. I'm like, what's up, third he wheel? He said, what's up, third wheel? <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe they all had to do with me, but... It's so fun to have you on. Every single time is so much fun. Well, it's awesome to support you. Um, I love what you're doing. I love your podcast. I love what you're doing with writing and speaking and just being an awesome mom and friend of people. I love supporting you. Well, the funny thing is, is that you do support me in real life, not just when you're on the show, but some of my favorite moments are when you publicly support me. I mean, who doesn't like to be publicly supported, right? Well, I mean, we all kind of do. We all do. But I I do support you when it's not public too. Yes, you do. Here's one of my favorite times that you were supporting the happy hour back from episode number 39. Listen to what you said is why you support me during the happy hour. 
because what you're doing is really important and really awesome. And it'd be easy for me just to not, not think about it or not value it. But yeah, that's why we're a good team is because you value, you try to value, you try to engage in everything I'm doing and I try to engage in everything you are doing. It's true. Constantly. And I've, then when we don't, several times you've been like, Aaron, I don't feel like you care about this. And, and vice versa. Yeah. And always I'll be like, well, that's definitely not true. So let's try to change that. I've talked openly. I think I wrote a blog one time about um, being your cheerleader. Mm-hmm. And I used the illustration of like a big like animal cage with two gerbils on a spinning thing. What are those things called? What do you think? Spinners? Um, gerbil spinners? Gerbil wheel? Gerbil wheel, like a Ferris <laughs> wheel, but for gerbils. I've used the illustration that both of us can get super busy doing our own thing, spinning on our own wheels. Yeah. And then we don't really... Think about the other person. Think about the other person because right. we're busy spinning. When really, I should be thinking like, oh, she looks so furry and warm. I just want to <laughs> snuggle up with that furry, warm. You want to get off your gerbil. wheel and come snuggle in my wheel with me. Yeah. No, but in our real reality, it takes somebody getting off of their wheel to come over and say like, hey, I see you and I acknowledge what you're doing. And then that encourages the other person to do the same. Yeah. Yep. We've had moments like that. Totally. For sure. Totally. It's still sweet to listen to, and I hope we haven't bored you guys with our lovey doveyness. We're going to move on quite we'll quickly. Get a, yeah, we'll, we'll move quickly from you to and something I. else. But one of the things I've loved about the happy hour is the fact that I get to talk to so many different women. We set out to talk to women of all different ages, of all different ethnicities, of different backgrounds, of different jobs, of all kinds of different things. And we've had quite a few single ladies on the show. And that's one of the big requests is people saying, hey, we want more single ladies on the show. So Aaron, here's some favorite clips from some of our single ladies that we've had on. And if everyone is not already starting to sing Beyonce, all the single ladies. I'm now's nodding your my chance. head. All the single ladies. All, all the, the single, single ladies. ladies. All, okay, no more of that. But first, let me play a clip for you from one of my favorite people, and that is Jaleesa McCreary. We're real life friends, which is fun as well. She works at the Austin Stone with my husband and leads worship. Listen to what Jaleesa had to say when she was on episode number 58. And you've told me that you see it as a blessing sometimes. I do see it Tell as a blessing why. a lot of the times. I think especially in this season of life with all the things the Lord keeps throwing at me and allowing me to be a part of, I just can't imagine how I would have the space or time to do any of those things if I had the commitment of a husband or commitment to kiddos or something like that. Just don't think it would really work as well. And think it changes for different seasons. You know, mm -hmm. you're not less busy now that you're married and have kids. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, it's the it's same. different. It just looks different in different seasons. But I think it's really special because like when you're reading and Paul's talking about having an undivided heart, at first you're like, that's silly. That doesn't actually sound like it makes any sense. But then you're living in it and you're walking in it and it is really sweet. It's just a special season to be able to really focus on who Jesus is, what he has for you. And then just the opportunities that come with it. There's just a lot more time for them, I think. So that sounds really good. Yeah, I like it. Is it ever really hard? Sometimes it's hard, yeah. I think I always am like, When is oh. it hard? When I think sometimes if I'm like in a place where it's all married people, I don't think about it until all the married people start pointing out that I'm single. And what do you mean? Like purposefully or no. like, oh, hey, Jaleesa, let's set you up? Or it just <laughs> is like, or just the conversation just turns to married people things. I don't mind talking about married people things. I think it's fun. I don't know anything about that because I'm not married. Mm -hmm. So I like hearing about it. I think it's fun to talk about. Yeah. I think when it's like the setting up, I'm always kind of like, oh, yeah. But what do you mean when you said... I don't think about it until they point it out. Like, what does that mean? Because if my friends are married, I'm just hanging out with my friends. But then when they're like, oh, we know someone that you should hang out with. I'm like, no. Or if they're like, are you, how is everything? Are you okay? I'm uh -huh. like, it's not the worst thing <laughs> in the world. I'm fine. You know, you know, I've been, I heard someone talk about this recently and they were talking about marriage and how it was, I think it was at that ERLC conference where mm -hmm. you at our church and we yeah. did that. Mm -hmm. Someone spoke about marriage, and I don't know who it is, so I can't give them credit, but they talked about how, as a church, we have elevated marriage to be the end all. Like, once you get married, yeah. this is the best thing that could happen to you. Mm -hmm. This is the best thing you could do. You've made it. Yeah. And that's just not true. It is? Yeah, absolutely. So we have created this environment in churches, in particular, I'm talking yeah. about as a church environment. We've yeah. created this environment of... You got you when you get married, you've made it. Yeah. And when you get married, things are easy. Isn't that so interesting? And when you get married, you can start ministry. Yeah. And that's so not true. I just don't understand what could be easier and perfected about taking on another human being. Right. Here. It just yeah. doesn't. So do you feel as though the church has set that up for you? The church as a whole. I'm not talking yeah. like 
I would say the church as a whole, for sure, it's, it is elevated. It is. And it is kind of like, I always say like 13 year old Jaleesa is like so upset at our life now because at 27, what'd you think? I thought, Oh, I'll be married by 23 uh-huh. and I'll have kids Couple and it's going to be so great. Uh-huh. Now I'm 27 and none of those things are happening, uh-huh. but the life God has given me is wonderful and great. But I think younger me wouldn't have thought so. But I think growing up in church, you just see that elevated a lot yeah. more. Like the end goal is to get married and you have made it when you are married and ministry sweeter when you are married and all of those things. It's just not true. It's not true. Uh -uh. So what can, what do you as a single woman serving God, Mm -hmm. doing ministry in the church, what do you want to say to married women? Oh, that's such a good question. What do I want to say to married women? Uh, I would say don't necessarily approach singleness with your single friends as if it's like some kind of disease. Like Like we need to fix it. Yeah. It's not like, Oh, why aren't you married? It's like, I, that's up to God. I don't know why I'm not married, but it's not a big deal, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So I think approaching it in a way of seeing it as, as much of a blessing as it is rather than it's like something that needs to be remedied, yeah. mm-hmm. I think. Like, let me help you. Yeah. I know how to fix this problem. Right. I need a man. Yeah. But why is it a problem if right. it's what God has for me? So true. <laughs> you know? It's not a problem. It's not. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a good word for married people is to not look at single people as though they have a problem that yeah. needs to be fixed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. So much wisdom. From Jaleesa. Um, I loved when she said, you know, seven year old Jaleesa might not be excited at where 27 year old Jaleesa is right now. And the way she talked about how sometimes churches set up single people, single women, mm-hmm. to think that marriage is the end all be all. Yeah. Or that you have to wait until you're in that season before God's going to use you. And people like Jaleesa are just proving the total opposite, the, the truth that God uses everybody at all different kinds of seasons. And I, I mean, just being side by side with Jaleesa at so many events and um, tours and what we do on Sundays. It is incredible just to see how God's using her so profoundly right now in this season of her life. And uh, it's been awesome to get to watch that and be led by her and cheer her on and what she's doing too. She talked about having an undivided heart. And I think that is something that maybe a single person might feel like, well, there's things that I have to be single to experience this. But as married people, we've been married 17 years, we can see the reality of what that looks like, is that Jaleesa has a better opportunity to serve, to go, to do things than you and I do. We have each other, we have four children. And so there really is a blessing in there that God has for all of you single people right now to not just think about, I cannot wait till my life begins when I'm married. And that's just not true, Mm-mm, that your life no. has begun already and God can do super, super big things through your life. That's exactly and right. Jaleesa spoke to all the married women, so I hope you pick that up if you're married. Okay, so another one of my favorite single ladies on the guest was Tara Lee Cobble. And fun fact, Tara Lee, I barely knew her. Lauren Chandler introduced us and her episode went crazy. It went crazy. She talked a lot about um, Bible reading and Bible and being in the Bible. And that was really, really, I think, intriguing to women. But she also had a lot to say about being a single woman. Okay, listen to what Tara Lee Cobble had to say from episode number 112. I'm single. Um, I'm my own boss. I'm not on staff at a church. I was at a mega church where I wasn't super connected with the pastoral staff. Mm-hmm. But I had, I was, then I, this ministry that I had started was exploding. And I was, terrified that I was going to do something that would ruin it. Oh, so you had already started D groups. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I had started D groups and I was, it was growing and growing. And I was like, oh man, this was not the, this was not the plan. My plan right. was <laughs> me and a couple of women studying the Bible every right. week. That was it. I didn't, I didn't know it was going to like, you know, be on four continents someday. So I was like, I, this is a responsibility. I need people, I need people's eyes on my ministry, but also on my life. And so I started praying that God would bring authority into my life, somebody just a covering, because it was so scary to not have that covering. Mm. And my thought was, oh, cool, this is a secret way to trick God into getting me married. Like, (laughs) God, I want authority and make that be a husband. (laughs) Exactly. Um, And then God was like, I have a better idea uh, of how to answer this prayer. And he said, how about I move you in with like a family? Right. A family and a man and a woman that you have so much respect for Mm -hmm. whose teachings and lives have changed yours. And they're going to watch your life and they're going to speak into it and they're going to help you develop this ministry. And I was like, okay, that's a great idea. What a gracious God. (laughs) Right. It's, it was just the best. And I mean, it, 
both Matt and Lauren are so, I could not have chosen two better people to, to get to live with, watch their lives, watch their marriage, watch their ministries. It was just the greatest gift. So I, I, I always am intrigued when mm-hmm. families have people live with them. Uh-huh. Um, I have several friends that have done that, and they literally speak of it as if it is this huge missing piece to their family, and they are so <laughs> fulfilled when they have um, either like a single person or a young married couple living with mm-hmm. them. Um, what do you think that is? So I, I can't speak to any fulfillment that I brought to their lives. <laughs> We'll ask them later to chime in. But for you, what I mean, what did that do for you? I, it's so as a single person, one of the hard things is I, I actually don't struggle a whole lot with the lack of a spouse. What I struggle with a lot is the, the things that are singleness adjacent. So that means as a single person, my life is constantly changing. My friends will. I may have really deep friendships and then they start dating somebody and then I don't see them again Mm -hmm. for a long time. Or when I do, it's very, it's just different changes. Right. Right. Or you have married friends and you're, you have these really deep friendships and then they have kids and they only then want to hang out with their friends who have kids. Uh And so everything is always in flux for a single person uh, for most single, or at least for me, I can't speak for every single person everywhere, but for me, my whole life has been in flux. And so that's a lot of why I've moved around a lot is um, because I, the the communities that I've been a part of have just shifted, you know, people will move away. And then all of a sudden what I once had in this great community and these rich relationships just completely deteriorate. You know, Tara Lee had so much just of laying down her pride and saying, you know what, even in the season of life of singleness, I think I have a need in my life for some sort of authority. And she talked about living with the Chandlers. Mm -hmm. Well, it reminds me too of like how important it is for married people to to be surrounded by single people, to not just have a bunch of married friends that are like you and in the same season of life, but we're just all better when we have different people around us from different seasons of life. I mean, that's been good for us. That keeps us like feeling younger and, and hearing new conversations and thinking about other things outside of married kids world, because we do have a lot of single friends that are in our house and a part of our teams and a part of our staffs and family. It's really important, I think. Yeah. And I think sometimes we start to believe the lie that we can only relate to married people. Mm-hmm. Or we can only relate to people who are in our same age bracket, or we can only relate to fill in the blank. Or single people don't want to hear what's going on in our married life or with kids stuff. And all that's just not true. It's not true. We've had other women on the show. Annie F. Downs has been on a handful of times. And just recently, Annie put a picture up on her Instagram about how she has a monthly dinner date with three different families. That's cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So three times a month, she's showing up at different people's houses that are married with children and they're all hanging out. That's really And they cool. all benefit from each other. Yeah. Kat Harris was on, Virginia Cumberbatch. We've had several other, besides that, great single ladies on the show. So make sure that you go back and find those because they are being used mightily for the kingdom and you do not have to be married to be used. That's right. I feel like as you're playing a lot of these clips, it's really highlighting the types of topics and the types of conversations that you're really passionate about, you know? The next one's about supporting women who are in business. You want to talk about that a little bit? Oh, yes. You know, when I started the show, I was a stay-at-home mom. And in fact, before the show, I worked for a couple months at a radio station, but I had not been a working mom since before we had kids. No, I was a teacher and a coach before we Mm -hmm. had kids. And so when I started the podcast as a hobby, a couple of years in, it started to think this is going to be a job. Right. And I was having to figure out how do I be a mom and a wife. At the same time. And own a business. Yeah. And it was scary. Uh, I made a lot of mistakes, a lot of, you know, a lot of mistakes, but I've grown so much. You think so? I think absolutely so. One of my first guests way back in when I had no idea what I was doing was my friend, Jessica Honiger. Jessica has been a supporter of the happy hour since the very, very beginning. I kid you not. Jessica is the uh, CEO and creator of Noonday Collection. And so we've been friends before either one of us were doing what we're doing today, which isn't that fun to it have is friends fun. like that? Yes, we need friends like that. Everybody does. You're going way back too. This is from episode number five. Yes. Listen to what Jessica talks about being a working mom. We got pretty raw about it in episode number five with Jessica Honiger. So when I transitioned to like, okay, this Noonday thing is like not a working from home type situation. Like it's time to 
get an you know, office. we really had to get an office uh-huh. space and start hiring people. And I'm suddenly the CEO of this, um, growing company. That was, that was a huge, huge shift for me, as you know. And I, I, that was, I wasted a lot of energy for about a year walking in places of, of shame around, you know, feeling like I'm not enough. Like with parenting and stuff. Yeah. And I think a lot of it was more uh, cultural from growing up in the South Mm -hmm. and then in kind of being in sort of the the Bible belt Mm -hmm. um, and just not having a whole lot of other Christian women around me that that worked. But the thing is, is there's not tons of opportunity for women that are wanting to kind of be, you know, I kind of have the best of both worlds where I have a really flexible schedule and all of that. So anyway, I used to drive to the office and think, oh my gosh, am I in sin right now? It was crazy. There are some crazy thoughts. And um, really, it robbed me from really receiving the provision that God was providing in my life. So I think I wasted so much energy, but it was a process. And I think ultimately, it's a process that led me to receive the approval that comes from from God in Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I think once I was able to just stand in that and really just receive God's affirmation and his perfection and his perfect approval over me and over the calling that he'd given me, there's just so much freedom came from that. And I'm just such a better mom because of it. I think that this is something that women struggle with no matter where you are. I've been an at-home mom since we had kids. And I remember there were days where I just felt like, and this was a lie as well, but I just felt like I can do more than just this. I have more in me, God, than just babies. And I'm not a baby person. Like I'm, my kids are older now and I'm loving every single thing about them way more than toddlers and babies. That's just who I am. But, you know, I was working out, outside of the home when I worked at the radio station for a while. And then I was just like, I did the same thing. I was like, I'm not with my kids enough. My kids, you know, they deserve me at home. It was just this. So I, I, I see it that women are always putting these pressures on no matter what you're doing. And really at the end of the day, I mean, so much research has been done to show that it, that's the bottom line is, is kids want to know that they were loved, you know, and, and when they know that, that that's really what makes yeah. the difference yeah. in their lives. Yeah. You know, Jessica and I have had this conversation off air a lot, even in the past couple months, we've talked about this, of just the shame that makes you feel as though you're a bad mom because you can't do this, so you have to miss out on this. Um, Jessica and I talk about how the world needs all kinds of women to make it run, and there are women at my kid's school that are doing amazing things that I don't have the capacity to do, and they're not better or less than than me. I know that if Jessica was here, we would have the same conversation and we would look all of you guys in the eyes, especially you working mamas, and say, you do what God has put in front of you and do it well. And don't let the enemy throw shame on you for something that you do not deserve to be shamed about. That's a good word. That's a good, That's good a good word. word. That'll preach. You know, another thing that I've struggled with, and I know Jessica has as well, is the struggle with approval. And as a woman running a business, it's like my approval idol went through the Mm -hmm. ceiling of feeling like, am I doing this well? Am I also being a good mom? Am I also being a good wife? Do you approve of me? Do you approve of me? And we've had to work through that as well, uh, the transition. Yeah. I feel like you've done a great job with that. You've been fighting against all those things and really trying to be a good steward of what you have and not find your worth in it at the same time and not feel shame about not doing other things. Yeah. It's a fight. That's what it is. It's a fight. Okay. You had a guest on recently that's become a new friend and um, kind of has impacted the way you look at your own business. Yeah. I've met Ruth Simons. I follow her online because all of you do as well. Uh, She creates beautiful art. She's the mom of six boys. Uh, Her Instagram feed is so beautiful. They just relocated to Colorado. And we were together at a conference a couple of months ago, and I got to sit down with her and interview her in person. First of all, Um, Her episode was, it started out quite hilarious. She kind of told me some things she's never told anyone, Uh which I always love that. I'm like, bring me the exclusive, (laughs) bring me the exclusive content, people. Um, Her exclusive content, Erin, was she's Chinese and she doesn't have to shave her legs. Oh. (laughs) I know. That's very... I was so intrigued. I was like, give me this life. That's very exclusive. I know. I I shave my legs and then get a shiver and I got hair back on my legs. Ooh. (laughs) <laughs> I feel uncomfortable even having this conversation. See, this is what we talk about at happy hours. Wow. Y'all don't do this, do you? Nope. 
Okay, well, Ruth came on and listen to this clip that we talked with her just about value in your work. This is Ruth Simons from episode number 194. I'm not saying it's a business for you, but you see it as a ministry, don't you? I totally do. What's hard though is that my family does live off of the products we sell, but the only way I will continue to sell the product is if the thing that drives the heart behind it is actually the ministry of it. So I can't speak about the product. Like I can't, I can't just be like, I paint things. Because you personally, it? you don't feel like you can or? It's not motivating enough. Okay. I, I mean, I will be bored. I will be bored and not interested and move on to something else if it's all about, please just buy this thing. But so you're like, you, here's the message. So if you see the way I do social media, it will always be the last thing I talk about. Like, if you want to buy this, yeah, go for it. it. Yeah. And I just have to trust the Lord with it. Uh-huh. And I have for the last several years. The Lord brings sales and that's fine because our family lives off of it now yeah. and I'm really grateful. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like, there's a reason why I started painting it and reading the truth and wanting to make it beautiful in the first place. And it was because I needed to see the gospel intersect my daily life in some tangible way, in a way that reminded me, like, keep your eyes on what's beautiful about the gospel. Do you know, when I first started this show, I felt guilty when I started adding ads. Hmm. And I got over that. Really? But I, because I thought, well, it's ministry. But then I'm like, well, I actually put a lot of work into this. Absolutely. It's my job. Why do you think women struggle with this? Because I don't think men do. (laughs) When's the last time you ever heard a man that's like, I don't know if I should make money for this? Yeah, I've never heard that. (laughs) I've never heard that. But why do we? And I think that it's good that we can have this conversation. Because some woman is sitting at home and she she has something in her and she wants to do it. And she's scared. And this could be one of the reasons. Because she's like, I don't know if I should do this or not. And sometimes it's that. Well, the bottom line is, I think, is because men don't look around to other men for their approval. Women do. Mm. We dress for other women to look at us. We don't. Like, I mean, mean, that's the bottom line, right? So at the end of the day, when you say that this piece of art is worth this much money, you are immediately saying, what do you think? What do you think? Do you think I'm crazy? Yes. What if you don't think it's worth that much? Then what do you think about me thinking that it's worth that much? So we we analyze everything. Are they going to think I'm too much of myself? Right, right. So it all boils down to really what whether or not we are enslaved to somebody else's opinion, even of our own opinion of ourselves, right? It's just this terrible cycle. So I think it's bad business. I mean, it's it's not smart business because the Lord's given us a brain to use, strategy. Yes. And at the end of the day, really, if you just take your eyes off of how to make me better, and you're just a little more generous about how to make it so that somebody's pausing for five seconds on your social media might get a glimpse of something more eternal, that's generous. Generous marketing is good marketing, Mm -hmm. you know? And so at the end of the day, it has to not point to me. Okay, so not only was Ruth hilarious, she threw down some wisdom about running a business. Uh, Ruth does a great job of marketing her business, but I would like to hear from you, Erin. She said, you know, women, we're looking around at all other women to get our approval. Men don't struggle with this. I mean, I can't speak for all of mankind. I I don't, I mean, I wouldn't say that they don't struggle with it. You do struggle with, Following somebody else that does the same job on Instagram or comparing, you know, stats of what you've done versus what somebody's done, there still is comparison. But I think the bigger driving thing for most men that I know, myself included, is just wanting to feel like you're being the best at everything. I think that's probably more of an issue than necessarily comparing. But it's like, I just, I want to be the best. I want to be number one. I want to be on top. And women... I can't speak for all women kind, but we might feel like, do you think what I'm doing is okay? Mm-hmm. Approval. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. I mean, it's still all rooted in the same thing. It's still rooted in finding approval in people versus finding approval in God. But I think maybe what I'm understanding or hearing is that girls measure it more based on like each other. Right. And dudes probably measure it more on whether I'm winning. Yeah. It's probably true. You know, I've heard people say that women, we dress for other women. Hmm. Like, do you like my outfit? Like, I'm not walking around wondering if the dudes at wherever we are like my outfit. See, it's never crossed my mind. (laughs) I wonder if my dude friends are going to like my outfit. Never. It's never crossed my mind. That's funny. Well, that's what we do. We're so weird about that. Ruth talked a lot about her Instagram feed. And I enjoyed our conversation because she is very intentional with her Instagram feed. And that was encouraging to me. She, and if you look at her feed, this is very noticeable, is that with every photo, 
it's like a teachable moment for her. Hmm. She's not just putting up a photo so you can see her house or her art or her kids. She's wanting to teach you something. And she said, I've worked through these things. I'm not putting it up the first time I'm working through it. That was encouraging. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think through social media a little bit more like that of how can I encourage you if you're going to stop and look at this picture? I don't want to just show you a pretty picture of My shaved legs. My my unshaved legs. (laughs) Would never put that on Instagram. I don't think so. No, please don't. Please. uh, Never, never, never. Never, never, never. Okay, guys, we're having so much fun talking about all these episodes, but I just want to thank the sponsors of the show because, believe it or not, sponsors make the happy hour happen. So our first sponsor today is West Rock Coffee. And if you know anything about the Ivies, you have ever been to one of my events, you listen to the happy hour, you know that we love West Rock. And I'm not just saying that. We drink that coffee every single morning. Okay, so here's what makes West Rock so amazing is that West Rock Coffee is a brand that is changing lives by providing coffee that you'll be proud to choose for your home. Their focus is to be a catalyst for real change in the lives of farmers and their families by paying a fair price for the coffee in the delicious blends and offering farmers training to enhance the quality and quantity of their crops. Most of us will enjoy a cup or two or if you're like me, maybe three or four, that's kind of embarrassing, of coffee every day. Some of us without even thinking about which brands we choose. Here's what I wanna talk to you about. Choosing West Rock Coffee's delicious blends that are truly changing lives is a difference that you can make by just drinking different coffee. Find West Rock Coffee at Kroger or Amazon or go to westrockcoffee.com to find where to buy West Rock closest to you. Okay, guys, I also want to thank another sponsor for today's show, and that is Grace Notes Subscription. Let me ask you this. Have you been looking for a way to memorize scripture that's easy and beautiful and fun? Well, Grace Notes Subscription is the answer. Grace Notes is a monthly subscription that includes two beautifully designed prints and a sticker that feature the same design and Bible verse. You simply put them in places you look often, read it repetitively throughout the month, and at the end of the month, you know the scripture really well. Great Snows also includes a card to write on. On one side, you write out the verse to help with retention, and on the other side, you write your prayers for the month. As a fun surprise, there's a custom coordinating paper clip. There's a new verse and design every month. For $10 a month, you can join other Grace Note subscribers in growing your faith, being confident in sharing God's word, and increasing your joy. They also have Man Notes and Kid Notes subscriptions available as well, so your whole family can learn the same verse together. Visit gracenotesubscription.com for your free phone wallpaper featuring this month's design and use the code Happy Hour for 20% off your first Grace Notes envelope. A few clicks and Happy Mail will be on its way to you. Okay, guys, I also want to thank another sponsor for today's show, and that is Lola Tampons. Did you guys know that the FDA does not require brands to disclose a comprehensive list of ingredients in their tampons? So guess what? Most of them don't. Most brands use a mix of synthetic ingredients in their tampons, including rayon and polyester. Their tampons may also be treated with harsh chemical cleansing agents, fragrance, and dyes. I'm serious, you guys, this is true. But here's what you need to know is that Lola tampons are 100% cotton with BPA-free plastic applicators. Lola also does this for you. And you guys know that I love when someone will deliver something to my door. And Lola is going to make this easier for you because they have a subscription and it is fully customizable. So you can choose your mix of light, regular, and super, your number of boxes, your frequency of delivery. Because guess what, you guys? You know your body best. Lola's subscription is super flexible. So you can change, skip, or cancel at any time. They're going to email you a few days before your box ships. No surprises, no gimmicks. And here's what I love also. It's founded by women and it's for women. Now they're offering pads and liners as well as non-applicator tampons for those looking for a more environmentally friendly option. So guys, guess what? You're gonna do good with your purchase as well. For every purchase, Lola donates feminine care products to homeless shelters across the US. Not only do I love that Lola's tampons are gonna be healthy for my body, I also love that they're gonna show up on my doorstep. They come in a cute box, personalized just for my needs, 100% cotton, and that BPA-free, it leaves me worry-free about what I put in my body. You guys, right now, Lola is giving a special deal for you. You're gonna get 40% off all subscriptions. Go to my Lola, that's L-O-L-A, mylola.com, and enter happy hour 40 when you subscribe. That's mylola.com, promo code happy hour 40. Okay, guys, here is the rest of the 200th episode. 
Okay, so jumping back in here, Ruth's conversation, it also touched on something that is really important to you and I personally, and that's conversations about diversity and, and conversations about immigration. So one thing amazing about her story is she grew up as a Chinese immigrant here in America. Yeah, it was really interesting to hear her story and to hear her point of view from that. And also, side note, if you haven't listened to that episode, go back and listen to how she talks about how her mother became a believer. It's a beautiful story. One of the things that's important for us at The Happy Hour is to present you with diverse voices. And one of the ways that we do that is to bring you women of color. One of my favorite guests that's been on is my friend, Tasha Morrison. Tasha was back in episode number 44. And Tasha is the creator and founder of the group Be The Bridge. And listen to what she talks about from episode number 44. How do we do it? Walk us through that real quick. I truly believe that one of the ways to build bridges of racial unity is to establish friendships with people who are of a different race. And so what I've noticed um, also in moving here to Austin is for me, that comes naturally as a minority that comes naturally because you are the minority. So you are often put in situations where you have to build those relationships in many cases, in many cases, through your job, through your school, or in some way you have to interact with someone that is of a different race with you. What I found that was different for a lot of people and the majority for a lot of white people mainly is that you don't necessarily have to do that. You know, um, a lot of times, you know, we've gone to depends on where you live in the country, you know, your school, your college, your workplace, your church, all of those things could be predominantly white. And so that just lends to a lot of assumptions. So if you don't know something about someone, you can have a lot of assumptions because you have never interacted or had an authentic relationship with someone of a different race. And so the goal was to really to connect us, to create a safe place where people of different races could come. And there was grace given to, you know, ask those questions and say, you know what? I feel safe. I trust you. You know my heart. This may sound a little racist, but hear me. But And then ask your question, (laughs) you know, and that's all right when you're in those safe environments. But what happens, a lot of us don't have those friendships in our life. And I think that's really important to create that. And sometimes you have to be really strategic and intentional to do that. I think something, too, that I've noticed just after we started this last May and then Mm -hmm. just everything that's happened in our country in the last couple of I mean, oh a year. I mean, it's been, it's been crazy. But I think what I sense the most and what this has been such a godsend for me is that I will never be black. It's, it's just never going to happen. Um, really? Really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do get pretty dark in the summer. I'll give you that. But I will. You do, <laughs> I know. But I will never be a black woman in America. Right. And so what it has done for me, it has allowed me to sit and listen and hear this is what it's like. Mm -hmm. And not just assume anything and not just take what I see on TV. It has allowed me to sit and listen. And I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. Someone asked us to share a time where you saw or experienced racism. Yeah. And everyone's going around the circle and everyone in the room that was a minority. And it's not just um, black women. So everyone in the room that that is of a minority culture in our country had a story Mm -hmm. about a time they had experienced racism. And I remember it got to me and I thought, I have absolutely nothing to say. Like I've never been discriminated upon just because of what I look like ever. And I know that, right. but it was to sit there with friends in a circle and hear their stories. And for me to really go, wow, like I cannot understand this because I've never experienced it. Right. When you stop and you start listening to the stories of other people, there's empathy that starts happening where you understand and you see through a different lens and the scales start falling off. And that's a painful thing because, you know, we all have different stories. And so my story is totally different from my friend who grew up in in Florida protesting at Klan rallies and Mm -hmm. we're the same age. So it depends on where you grew up, you know, how your experiences are. There may be some people that are um, white, but they've experienced discrimination in some kind of way, depending on where they grew up. So it's just good, I think, to listen to the stories of others and to not think just because you haven't experienced it, that it's not happening. Dang, so good. 
so good. Tasha has been a gift to me and so many of my friends. It was an honor to be in that first Be The Bridge group way back then. And Tasha has been like on speed dial my phone a few times when I've had some situations. You know, this is our life growing up, raising children of color. Mm -hmm. And how good it is to have friends of color that we can call or text and say, hey, help us through this. What what do we need to know here? We don't know what to do or say. Yeah. We've had some hard scenarios in the past even six months with our kids, and it's been a joy to have these friends in our life. Another one of my favorite guests that's been on is Latoria Wilson. And her episode could actually fall under the single ladies episode as well, because we talked about that. But Latoria lives in Dallas. She actually is a rapper and she was the guest at my last happy hour live, which was awesome. A riot. A it hoot. was so much fun. Latoria is from episode number 153. Listen to what Latoria says in this clip. You know, I think and have been thinking for years very deeply on these things, Jamie, and and I'm still just thinking and praying and I write my thoughts out and, you know, ask the Lord to just kind of show me how to navigate through some of these realities. Right. So one of the things that I'm kind of chewing on, but I don't mind sharing it is, you know, the Bible talks about the fact that we don't wrestle against just flesh and blood. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, so Mm -hmm. some of these things that we are experiencing are spiritual Mm -hmm. and One of the things that that I'm still kind of navigating through is how much of the systems that have been set in place in this country are spiritual. How much of those things are set up so that white people can't see it? Mm. Explain that for me just a little bit. Yeah. So I think there is a there's a common thread in a lot of the dialogues that I have where a white person can go their whole life without ever knowing that they're privileged. Right. They could go their whole life without ever really getting that there's a problem. Mm-hmm. They could go their whole life, you know, just believing that, you know, I'm a Christian and everybody in America should, you know, be happy because we're all we have equal opportunity. And, mm-hmm. you know, you pursue the American dream and everybody has an equal chance to do that. Right. Right. So the question, I don't have the answer. It's something that I'm pondering on. Is that a spiritual blockage? Mm. Is that system, that bubble that allows the white person to live in this reality that everything is okay, is that spiritual? Mm. It's a question. It's something to think about because it's like we understand the history, you know, and as to how we've gotten to this place, Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. But I think that there are thought processes and beliefs that are kind of handed down. And I feel like those things are spiritual. Mm. You know what I mean? And so that's kind of what I'm saying is like there's this invisible idea bubble, I guess you could say, Mm -hmm. that a lot of white people live in where they are not really in tune with the reality of what's happening in the earth. Mm. The reality of what's happening in the land that we live in is it's an alternate reality for a lot of them. So you're saying like this battle is bigger than what we can even see. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And which, you know, would make sense. You know what I mean? Like there's systems that have been set in place to set certain individuals up to not see it. That's why when you bring it up, they're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Wouldn't that just be one of the greatest deceiving things that the enemy could do for the church, the big church? Yes. It's to divide that way. Could you imagine, Jamie, what the world would be like if we, the big church, see really loved and understood and cared for each other like we were for real brothers and sisters? Yeah. It would be... Like the, the, just the group that I'm in with these women, you know, where our focus is kind of re- racial reconciliation, there is a supernatural just thickness in that room. Mm-hmm. The love and the grace that exists when we come together is really hard to describe. Mm. And I could just imagine if the big church C really operated in that kind of realm, it would mm-hmm. be crazy. That kind of just gave me the chills. <laughs> You know, LaToria and Tasha, plus many other women that have been on, have really spoken into what it feels like to be a Black woman in America. And one of the things that I've learned the most and that I hope you learn through listening to these conversations is how important it is to listen. How important it is to just listen when even as though you don't feel the experience that they felt, that it doesn't make it not true and it doesn't make it less than But to just listen to our sisters when they're saying things, I think that's been the thing I've learned the most from all of my guests that Mm -hmm. that we've talked about racial issues. It's just how important it is to listen and to trust. Okay, you've had a lot of people on your podcast that are really close friends or people that you have run across, uh, you know, met in in book world and conferences and all that kind of stuff. But there have been some guests that you've had on that have caused a little bit of like, nervousness or anxiety on your part, right? A little right? butterflies in my belly. Yeah, we, like I know an hour before you're going to go record it, 
You're genuinely nervous about talking to him. Genuinely nervous, yes. Well, name a couple that well, come to mind. I interviewed Kathy Lee Gifford. That was a big one. That was a huge one. Yep. And I was in Nashville at the time having a meeting, and I had to just find some like boardroom and mm-hmm. do it over Skype. And she was so lovely. She was so lovely. I mean, I guarantee you, if someone said to her, "Hey, you know my friend Jamie Ivy," she'd be like, "I have no idea who you're talking about." But it was so fun. And it was a really good one, too. It was a bucket list. There was another guest you had on that same exact podcast, wasn't it? It was Kathy Lee and somebody. Oh, you were on that episode. Oh, well, that's right. Uh, <laughs> so it was Kathy another Lee and Aaron one. Ivy. What about Candace Cameron? Yeah, Candace Cameron Bure, you know, Full House. Hello, uh-huh. DJ Tanner. That's big. Yep. And she was fun, too, because I didn't know DJ Tanner. That's not her real name. She's online a lot these days, and she's doing a lot since Fuller House came back out. She was really fun to talk to. And that was mm-hmm. just exciting because who didn't watch Candace oh, yeah. as DJ Every Tanner? Every episode. Every episode. Every episode. You probably had a crush on her. Everybody did. Every boy yes. did that's 40 right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, Beth Moore, though. Beth Moore was episode 108. You were a little bit anxious, right? Not nervous, were you? But Oh, I was nervous you as were nervous. all okay. get out. Yes, okay. Beth Moore. First She's of all, a big deal. If you have grown up in the Christian world, Beth Moore is a huge deal. Um, I mean, she's written, I think, like 878 Bible studies for mm-hmm, women. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to just tell her what she's meant to me in my life. Um, Which fact, was so awesome. It was so awesome. In fact, one of her um, Bible studies called Breaking Free came out years and years and years ago. It's the first Bible study I ever did as a believer. It was so good for mm-hmm. me. It yeah. was so it was that first semester that we were dating. So you got to tell her like what what her her work and her voice has meant to you, which is awesome. As much as I tried to be just a normal person. You tried to, to play her, it cool. I tried to play it so cool. Listen to this clip from episode number 108 with Beth Moore. I was grew up in a Christian home and then just didn't even know Jesus till I was older. But I sat in the Coliseum in Passion 1999 and I remember oh. nothing about it except for a random woman named Beth who was teaching. And I just want to tell you, thank you for letting God use you because I know I have a story like hundreds of thousands of women. So I just wanted to personally say thank you. Jamie, I just felt I, I'm, I'm kind of sitting in a t-shirt with, with Velcro rollers in my hair. And I just, <laughs> felt, I just felt a chill go all the way up the back of my spine that I cannot tell you what that means to me. I, I love nothing better than to see a young woman find her niche in the body for that season. Cause it, you know, God wants to, he reserves the right to say, this is the next thing we're doing. This is the next, you know, women, we want to decide this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. That's really not God's way. He goes, you know, you follow me, Mm -hmm. Uh, you just follow me wherever I'm going. But I, I love that something fell on you, something, something, took root in you. And then Jamie, you did, you realized that when, that on that day, as God looked ahead, that what you are doing right now did not exist. Mm. Okay. So did I sound giddy? A little bit. You sound earnest. You sounded like genuine. It was, I was so giddy and genuine. In fact, but you know, what's even cooler is that in the fall, I'm going to be we're both going to be at a conference where Beth is teaching and you're leading worship. And I'm probably, I don't know what I'm doing, like a breakout or something or a panel, but my picture is on the same page as Beth on the speaker page. Right. I'll be giddy around Beth. You will be giddy around We've Beth. We've been around Beth together only one time. And, and you I, were I, giddy. I, I, had, I got clammy. Why? I had a crush on her, probably more than Candy DJ. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know have why. a crush on Beth? Because she's still today. She, someone might tell her this. Are you going to say this on I mean, air? not a for real crush, but I mean, what do you mean? Like, you have a crush on George W. Bush, that mm-hmm. kind of thing? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure Beth would be honored. I'm sure she or would. Or creeped the heck out and be like, listen, Dr. Moore, well, keep Aaron Ivy away from I don't, me. I don't think at this point she even knows that you and I are together because when we did interact with her, I don't think she made the connection that I was your husband. Oh, she thought we were like sister, brother and sisters. I don't know. <laughs> it just, it, it, yeah. So we're going to be on the same stage with her working together. I have been That's around be Beth in person twice. And I'm telling you, I think she's the real deal. Mm, I really, uh, really, real really do. Um, and her daughter, Amanda, has been on the show twice. Uh, Amanda's been on. And I'd love to have her other daughter, Melissa, on. But I love the Moore girls so, so very much. And it was it was actually, when I look back at the happy hour, 
that was one of my greatest, greatest moments. Mm-hmm. I mean, yep. I think I could get teared up again. If you could go back and tell the person- That had the most impact on your life. That had the most life. impact on my life spiritually. Like I decided to follow Jesus through Beth's words. Yeah. That's, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So that was super great. You know, another guest that we had on, this is when I go back and people always ask me, hey, would have been one of your favorite interviews? This was one of my most unlikely favorite interviews. And I say unlikely because I did not know what to expect. This was one of my favorite interviews because I was a fan of this woman before she was even on your podcast, but then listening to her actual podcast episode made me just respect and admire her even more as an artist and an author. So Sally Lloyd-Jones was on episode number 76. And if you don't know who Sally Lloyd-Jones is, first of all, wake up. First of all, go back and listen to the episode because it is hands down. I would actually, Aaron, put it in like the top 10 out of all the 200. Oh yeah. It is so, so good. Didn't you send it to people on your team? Yes. As creatives. Yeah, as creative people, you need to listen to it. So all I knew about Sally Lloyd-Jones was that she wrote the Jesus Storybook Bible, which that feels so weird to be like, have your name as also a Bible. Author of a Bible. Yeah, but if you don't have the Jesus Storybook Bible, get it for yourself, for your children, or for just yourself. I'm Mm -hmm. not kidding, it's that good. Listen to a clip of her from episode number 76. I mean, literally, we're instilling the story of Jesus as a redemptor through our children when Mm -hmm. we're reading them to bed at night. And it's just just the most beautiful thing. So I'm I'm a huge fan of it. Well, I love the fact that If you write with the excellence that children deserve, you know, C.S. Lewis was the one who said that. There's no book that is good enough for a 10-year-old that isn't good enough for a 50-year-old. And if you write with with respect and you work as hard as you should, I mean, because writing for children, you have a greater responsibility, so you should really be working harder. And if you if you treat children like that and you distill, you don't simplify. You simplify, but that doesn't mean you're simplistic or idiotic. Mm -hmm. You're distilling you're taking a profound truth and you're making it into you're putting into into words that a young person can understand if you treat them with that kind of respect then the thing that blew us all away was then you're going to reach everyone because excellence is the most inclusive thing and I think that's why it reaches adults even though none of us had any idea that was what was going to happen now looking back you think well of course God would do it that way because look at how high a view he had of a child yeah it's so true the most important thing is to tell the truth, however you tell it. And, and you can tell it in a Bible story, like I did in the Jesus Storybook Bible, or you can tell it in Skip to the Loo, which has no Bible verse, mm-hmm. is not overtly anything, but it's coming from a place of joy. And to help a little one not be scared of their potty, mm. well, that's something good, and that's something um, honoring and truthful, isn't it? Yeah. Just as much as telling the story of the prodigal son. So mm-hmm. I look at all of it is redemptive, really. You know, it's like sin has unraveled the fabric of the world and art is one of the ways that we reweave however we do it. Whatever however, your art is. Yes, and I think as Christians, it's good for us to support art, whether it has a Bible verse on it or not. I love that. That is so true. And if you can say it's excellent, then it's then you send it off. That's and that's, good. Read me, and I share that because I'm sure there are lots of mothers out there mm-hmm. who beat themselves up because they weren't the sort of perfect mother that they think they should be. But to me, if you were, it wouldn't help your children because they'd never learn about how you say sorry, how you're broken, how that's where the How much we need Jesus. Exactly. We can't, we're not the rescuer Uh and we're all part of the fall and we're all going to mess up. But thank goodness it's not all up to us, you know? I love her vision for the book and how it has reached so, so many lives. We are grateful for Sally writing um, that book and we're grateful for her work that she does. Uh, And one of the things I love about both Sally and Beth, and I think it's fun that we're kind of highlighting both of those episodes. Um, First of all, they're older women who have been just trailblazing the way for us women behind them but they've also displayed so much integrity and excellence in their work. And that is a value that can sometimes be not cared for much these days, Mm -hmm. but they've both done that so well and their lives have been so inspiring to me. Yeah. You've also had guests on that have talked about just the really hard, hard places in their life. Yeah, one of the things, you know, again, I go back to what happens at a happy hour. I've cried many tears at a happy hour with my girlfriends where we talk about the hard things in life. And there were so many shows for us to pick about the hard things because here's what I've noticed. And this is true because I wrote my book. Here's what I've noticed is that when you share your hard stuff, 
you open the door for other people to be vulnerable and share their hard moments That's as well. Right. Yeah. And so the shows that we're about to highlight, these next two shows, I probably got the most messages about these two shows from women who have been in super, super hard situations mm -hmm. like both of these um, gals have. One show we're not gonna highlight, but I would if I had all the time in the world is Holly Hayes. If you did not hear that episode, it's been this past spring and she talks about Oh my gosh, I'll never forget it. When she talks about going into the abortion clinic and everyone's screaming outside the door and then she had her abortion and she walked out the back door and there was nobody. Mm -hmm. So everyone was screaming at her before. Yeah, she at, had the her at the front door. At the front door. Nobody there at the back door. Nobody there at the back door. She said, where are the Christians at the back door? Yeah. Oh, I'll never forget so that. Powerful. But first I wanna listen to one of the topics we talked about was marriage. And I had my friend Jamie Nato on and you know, the funny thing is about interviewing is a lot of times I don't like to know your whole story before you come on. Yeah, you like to just talk about it naturally like you would. I like to be there in the moment as if we were meeting for a happy hour. How many times right. am I going to say that? But my friend Jamie, I did not know her full story. And so listen to Jamie Nato in episode number 68. We had just, we also just changed churches. We had been there for six months and so, you know, you're kind of telling this to new, newish friends. Yeah. Hey, we're the new people. And I think my husband's having an affair. Right. Yeah. And and we look like super Christians, so you'll mm -hmm. never believe this. Right. But our marriage, something's weird with our marriage. And I never said, I, I never said, like, he's having an affair with another woman. Mm -hmm. I did use the language, like, I feel like he's he's having an affair, but it's with his job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, like, something in me knew that his heart was not all mine. Yeah. And, and it, his relationship with God was just off as well and and there were just so many red flags so by the time everything became public mm -hmm. people had sort of known at that point that we were in a rough spot mm -hmm. but nothing you couldn't just you know kind of talk about with friends and work through is what everyone was thinking like your marriage will be fine we'll just have a couple meetings and we'll have you over for dinner and we'll kind of just talk you down from the ledge mm -hmm. and but I was a mess. I mean, I'm crying at people's dinner tables and I'm... Is this after you knew that it was actually no, an affair with a woman? Before. This was before. Okay. Okay. I can't... I have never been great at not being quiet. Okay. <laughs> so I, I was telling people and no one... I mean, I'm telling, I told my parents. I told, um, you know, our friends. I told our small group mm -hmm. and... And no one really believed me. Those were those were kind of hurtful moments in that. When I look back, at that does sting a little mm -hmm. um, for a person who values having a voice and um, loves to help others have a voice. You know that that got taken away from me. So looking back, what do you wish would have happened when you had those vulnerable conversations with friends, saying, "Hey, something's off. Something's weird." You know, I I also give a generous assumptions about that, that you only know what you know. And he played such a great game on that. Mm -hmm. He just was an incredible, he was just incredibly deceitful. He's very charming. Um, I still say now when he, if you would watch him in a crowd or at church or anything, it legitimately looks like he's running for office. Like he is shaking. He's just one head. of those people. Oh, so it has holding somebody's baby, uh -huh. taking a package out to their car. I mean, he's just like, sometimes I can't find him. And there he is like chatting with people yeah. outside the church. And I'm like, I will hurt you right now in your face. Yeah. So, so you're expressing this and people are just like, it doesn't add up because they see right. your husband. Yeah. They're like, hey, this is a really rough spot. Like that makes sense that this would be rough. You guys just had a baby. He's kind of figuring out his job. New job, He's new baby, new church. Yeah. So that it's it wasn't that. And and when everything did come out, I mean, people were incredible. Mm -hmm. It's just there is as a self protector. When I look back on that, I think nobody protected me, and which is not true, but. If you kind of grow up doing that, and that's kind of your mantra, that no one will protect me, so I must protect me. Mm -hmm. And then when you can't do that for yourself, it's very, I mean, that was part of my fall. That was part of what hurt so bad when I fell so far down. Yeah. And not to say, that was incredible for me. That was very good for me. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, things you can do for people when they are expressing concern, particularly in marriage, is... Believe them. Mm -hmm. 
You know, the craziest thing, Aaron, about Jamie's, and you've met Jamie mm-hmm. and Mark now. And yeah. husband, yeah. Yeah, she was also a guest at a Happy Hour Live uh, last year in 2017. One of the craziest things, and I said this when I interviewed Jamie, is that by reading her blog, following her online, I did not know until the moment she said it in the interview that it was her husband who had had the affair. Hmm. The entire time of me following her story, I thought it was her. Really? And the reason I thought it was her is because she was so open about what God had done in her life through that disaster. Wow. I, I, I'll never forget that because to me, this, walking through suffering, we talk about suffering all the time on the show. In fact, just last week, Liz Curtis Higgs was on and we talked about her suffering, walking through cancer. And she said, you know, she said it's one of God's greatest blessings mm-hmm. in her life. Suffering is so difficult, but the way Jamie was handling it was she was saying, God, show me something about myself in this. Teach me to love you more. It's incredible. Through her husband's adultery. Yeah. So amazing. Yeah. Another show that we got tons of feedback on was Ellie Holcomb. Now, you love Ellie for her music. I love Drew and Ellie Holcomb yes. for, for their music. We need Drew and Ellie Holcomb to come to, to do a house and show. do a house show. Yeah. Ellie, Drew, come on. We're waiting for you. Come on. Ellie, at next July 4th. Next July 4th. Because tonight we're having a big house show <laughs> Tonight at we are house. having a house show. Yep. Who's playing? Flatland Holler and the Garza Family Band on the porch right here of your tiny home. It's going to be so much fun. So next year though. Next year, maybe Drew and Ellie. 243rd birthday of America. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yes. It'd be the 252nd episode. Come on. Maybe something like that. Something. Anyhow, Ellie and I sat down in a hotel room in Nashville. We were both there for something and... Let me tell you, we were real and raw. And listen to Ellie in this clip from episode number 162. Absolutely, year three. You know, like where you were living, what the living room was set up like. You <laughs> it's, the year, it's the year that I went to counseling. Okay. And honestly, like, and I was that girl that went to counseling and I was like, so I have this friend. <laughs> <laughs> and they're having a really hard time. I'm asking and for I'm a just here for them. <laughs> yes. And at the end of it, I had a lot of pain from my past from past relationship really that was really unhealthy that had followed me into my marriage uh-huh. and I was a wreck. I didn't know I was a wreck and I didn't know I needed help, but she was so wonderful. And that was the, it was absolutely the hardest time and absolutely the most painful and the most like, I just felt stripped of everything. And um, it was really hard. Lots of just working through issues, but I will say that hardest time where the soil was tilled up so much, it laid the groundwork for like flourishing. Yeah. I mean, just flourishing. And my best friend sent me this article and it was like, happy third year anniversary. By now you've realized you've married the wrong person <laughs> oh, gosh. because every person is the wrong person. They're, they're people. Yeah. And no one's perfect. No one's perfect. And there's going to be conflict. And here's the point where love comes in, where you say, I'm in with you for all of your flaws and all of the things that drive me crazy about you. Let's work through it. And so anyway, Uh, it's been a really beautiful journey, even though I say it now, I probably need to be, it's good to remember that it was painful. Uh I say it's beautiful now, but I'm like, this is worse. Like when we first started having conflict, I'm like, this is worse. I want to go back to pretending that everything's fine. Right. Can we just act like everything's fine? And someone who's a truth teller, they're like, this is dumb. Why would we not talk about this? He was loving it. Yeah. He was like, I like you so much more now. And I'm like, I feel like... You feel, vir- you feel exposed. So exposed. Yeah. Like a child, like yes. a young, like temper tantrum throwing child. Oh my gosh. Okay, you're three. I'm three. Interesting. I love it. <laughs> I felt three, three years into being married. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Our harder years did not hit until probably year, I want to say like nine, 10, 11. Mm-hmm. When we started adding to our family through adoption, it was just circ- life got hard for the first time for us. Ooh. And it's like everything just kind of, you know, came up to the surface and it was hard for us. Yeah. But Man. I'm a fan of counseling. Oh my goodness. Let's just encourage women with that because I have benefited from it. My husband has been, we have been as a family. Yep. Two of my kids go every other week. I mean, oh, it is a value for us Ivies. 
So Ellie, you've got to go back and listen to her entire episode if you didn't hear it. She talks about how hard marriage was at the beginning of her and Drew's marriage and uh, how she had to deal with a lot of hard things. We talk about um, anxiety and depression. We talk about counseling. Um, She talked really, really candidly about walking through a friend through some super hard times with depression. And we got a lot of feedback from the show because listen, guys, these kind of hard conversations, they're okay to have. In fact, I hope you find girlfriends that you can have these conversations with um, if you're feeling any of the things like Ellie talked about. And she, again, pointed us back to Jesus the whole time. She didn't sugarcoat any of the pain she was walking through, but constantly pointed back to the gospel. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we want every show of the happy hour to do. Yeah. It's a point to the gospel. Yeah. And I'm thinking about the guests that I know you're going to have, you know, over the next like year. And that's the thing that you're focusing on is you want people to come tell their story, the good parts, the bad parts, the hard parts, because in all those, it really is pointing back to how great God is. It really is. And it's just life. Mm -hmm. You know, life is hard sometimes. Yep. Um, I'll tell you what's not hard what we're going to do tomorrow morning. <laughs> I'll tell you what's not hard is we're recording this early because that's, that's how, how it works in works. show business. <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> um, we're recording this early and actually our kids are all in the house. We have no idea what's happening. No, we haven't known what they're doing for the last two hours. We don't care. <laughs> no worry. My it's mom's 9, over there. It's 9, 12 PM. Yes. Where, what, what's happening tomorrow? Tomorrow we're getting on an airplane and we're going to Italy, uh, which that sounds super fancy. And it is. I mean, it is, it is fancy. Yes. We are going on a writer's retreat. So it's work. It's like 10% work and 90% play. It's 10% work, 90% pizza. (laughs) Pizza and wine and cheese and bread. Right. Everything I'm packing is stretchable because... I, That's a good thought. I know. Well, I have nothing packed but skinny jeans. I should probably take those out and put sweatpants You're on You're going to need to put some, some little cargo jeans. The Italians cargo don't jeans. seem like they'd be down with like showing up to a restaurant in sweatpants. No, I think Italians, I'm, I'm bringing like all my like, not nice because we don't have dressy clothes in this house, but like just a step up date night every night. Yeah. The dressiest you can get. That still has elastic. Yeah. So we're going for a writer's retreat that my agent, Jenny Burke, puts on. And um, so we're super excited. It's nine days of just rest and relaxation, connecting with God, connecting with Italy. And, (laughs) you know, Aaron and I, we do these things to connect with each other as well. And listen, Italy, I know it sounds crazy and some of you have just written us off, but let me tell you something. This is kind of work and play, but we have a value. And our value is this, is to get away with each other as often as we can. Yeah. And make whatever sacrifices along the way to make that happen. What, Even if you're doing a staycation in your own town or you're you're driving to a town that's an hour away, something where you're getting away. We've done a staycation before. Yep, here in, in Austin. Austin. And you know, here's some of the pushback that we get. Well, I don't want to leave my kids. And I, I, I want to be real frank with you. You need to leave your kids. You need to leave your kids because here's what's going to happen, my friend. Listen, if I was sitting across from you, I'd be looking in your eyes and holding your shoulders. Is that one day your kids are going to grow up and they're going to leave you. That's right. So show them and, and leave them. And well, <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Not that, but foster the relationship that's going to last the longest. And we told our kids this tonight. We're like, listen, mom and dad are leaving and it helps. We come back better parents because you do. When mm-hmm. you have a break from your kids, you go spend time away. Uh, you're able to talk about you know life and talk about everything that's kind of going on in marriage. And you come home and you actually can engage with your kids more because you've had just a little bit of a pause and you appreciate them more when you come back. Yeah. You, you're able to show them a little bit more grace because you're not just head down in it all the time. You're just full of pizza. Just elastic <laughs> sweatpants, another, big baggy t-shirts, the another, whole thing. <laughs> another pushback is I don't have anyone to watch my kids. And I, I'm not, I'm going to tell you it's a very valid problem, but here's what I want to you to think about as you look through that is who is your community? Because that's why building community is so important. And, you know, we talked about single ladies on here. I'm telling you, I don't have single lady friends so that they can watch my kids, but that is one of the benefits is that they are available to do that. Um, a lot of times when we travel together, our friend Lindsay, who um, she comes and stays with our kids and we pay her, you know, but she gets the opportunity to do that. And so look around at your community, bring people into your world. And also we've had many of times where we've had friends keep our kids and then we've kept their kids next time. And it just takes sacrifice. That's right. Yep. Is there a third pushback? Uh, I think the third pushback is, well, that must be nice, but we don't have the money right now for it. And I think there are seasons where, you know, couples have to really hunker down. Maybe there's a difficult season or you're trying to get out of debt that you, you shouldn't go on a vacation, 
But I think um, there is an opportunity to always be be saving, save pennies, save, cut out some eating out, um, say no to some other things so that once a year you can go on a staycation or you can do one or two nights um, at a town next to yours. You know, I think it's really easy to say, well, we don't have the money and use that as an excuse to never get away with your own spouse. You know, you probably have friends that know somebody that might let you use their house or use uh, some sort of vacation property that they have. You know, the, early on in our marriage, we didn't have the resources to do that, but we did have friends that would say, hey, y- y'all can use our our place for the weekend or, you know. Do you remember the first place we went alone after we had kids? The first place we went alone after we had kids. I don't. I do. You surprised me and took me to Chicago. Oh, I do remember. We lived that. in Nashville at the time, and we so we drove. drove. Seven we hours. had one child, and I dropped him off at my friend Shauna's house. And yep. she had parented three children at that point. They were all in middle school and high school, so she was a fully capable parent. I gave her like four pages of notes. We brought in every baby thing we had for mm-hmm. a three day trip. We had, I think we had to get a U haul just to get. The I baby mean, we stuff had a pack house. and play. We had a bounce thing. We had a thing you hang in the door. We had. She probably thought we were crazy. She probably thought we were crazy. Well, because she had middle schoolers at the She's time. She's like, I've done this. I'm okay. I mean, four printed out list of things, but I was that kind of mom. Then. I'm sure when we left, she threw it all at the door and. Oh, gave, she totally did. Gave Caden. Yeah, Hot dogs and- exactly, exactly. <laughs> but we did not have the resources at that time to do a lot of things, but it was a value to us and it was important to us. Yeah, we, we saved, saved up, up for a year yep. and went we saved to a, up. Yeah, an inexpensive hotel and ate, you know, really simple food. Yeah, we did. So get away, guys, with your spouse. Um, and listen, I, the single friends that we know, they take time away from work and get away as well. Mm-hmm. It is such a value yep. to kind of get away from real life. Yep. Um, you guys- Happy 200th happy hour episode. Here's the 200 more. Here's the 200 more. Thank you guys for listening. Some of you guys tell me places when I see you around that you have been listening since the very, very beginning. That is so cool. It is so cool. In fact, the very first episode is with my friend Amy. We're best friends since ninth grade. And I just basically said, hey, can I record our phone conversation and make it into <laughs> a podcast? Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am honored to be able to be with you every single week in your ears and to bring you women who have amazing stories, amazing ideas, and amazing ways to encourage you. I hope that every single week when you listen to the show, I hope you're encouraged. I hope you're inspired. And most importantly, I hope that you're pointed to Jesus every single time. Um, If you are listening and this is your first time, welcome. This is our happy hour. Also, guys, if you've never subscribed to the show, it is super easy. It's super easy, especially if you have an iPhone. If you have an iPhone, go to your podcast button, hit search, look up the happy hour and subscribe. That way the show shows up in your phone every single week. If you don't have an iPhone, use an app like Stitcher or Overcast or Google Play, all kinds of different ways that you can listen to the happy hour. Hey, thanks for letting me join you and bust your party. Thanks for coming. You now are still, you are still still the most. The most. Guest on the show, except for Jessica Honiger's coming she's back in the two. fall. So she's we'll number see. two. She might try to pass you up. Yeah, she's awesome. I'd be okay with that. All right, we got some packing to do, girl. I know. We got packing. We're going to Italy. Ciao. Is that Italian? Yeah, I don't know if Ciao is <laughs> Italian. We'll come back and tell you. We'll come back and tell you. Hey guys, I want to tell you about my book, If You Only Knew, my unlikely, unavoidable story of becoming free. If you have not had a chance to pick up this book, I would highly recommend it for you. And not just because I'm the author of it, that seems kind of lame, but because I really, really believe in the message. It seems kind of funny as a 40-year-old to write a book about your story when you've only lived for 40 years. But when I was in my early 20s, God really did a work on my life, and He really wrecked me and made me fall in love with Him and His Son, Jesus. And then when I got married, I brought a lot of shame into my marriage. And I know because I hear it from so many women that this is such a familiar story. And so if you're like me, if you've kind of maybe had some things in your life that you're not the most proud of, you might enjoy reading my story and how God changed my life and brought a lot of freedom into my world. So check it out. It's called If You Only Knew, My Unlikely, Unavoidable Story of Becoming Free. And you can get it anywhere books are sold. Guys, I also want to tell you this, is that when I was talking about Latoria's show, I accidentally said episode number 153. Her show is actually episode number 154. 
I highly recommend you go listen to it. So I wanted you to have the correct number. Also, just a little note to self. Anytime we talk about anything in our show, we always put the links in our show notes. So check out jamieivy.com slash blog. You'll find all the links for all the shows we recommended today. To make it even easier for you because we like you a whole lot, here's what you can do also. You can join our newsletter, jamieivy.com slash newsletter. And then every week, we're going to send show notes directly to your email inbox, which means you listen to the show on Wednesday, you open up your email, there's all your links. Guys, I told you this was a fun episode, and I want to tell you that next week's is going to be a lot of fun as well. Next week, my guest is Jamie Grace, and I fell in love with this girl when we did our conversation. She's so fun. She's the real deal, and she's someone that is worth listening to. We had a great time, and you're going to love our conversation. Today's show was edited by Chris with Podshaper, and the music was developed for this show by Matt Graham. Guys, enjoy your week. If you live in America, happy 4th of July. Share the show with a girlfriend and have a happy hour with a friend. I will see you all right back here next week with my guest, Jamie Grace.